Hey, welcome to Today Matters, and I am, it's Friar Friday. I'm wearing my Padres gear. I'm a Padres believer. It's going to happen one day. Wait, hey, we're in the book of Philippians, and, and we're looking at the end of chapter 2, where the Apostle Paul commends a couple of guys with some clear values. He commends two Christians that he held in high esteem. We're going to look from Philippians. We can see that these are values that God looks for in the life of a Christ follower that he wants to bless. Yesterday, the first one was compassion. Today, the second one is consistency. Would you write that down? It's consistency. One of my favorite things I like to collect, and I'm not much of a collector, but if you were to visit my office, you'd see a theme. In my office, I have signed pictures and memorabilia, jerseys, things like that from some really consistent sports heroes of mine. I've got Nolan Ryan, the greatest pitcher of all time. Don't even argue with me on that. You'll lose a lot of respect in my book. It's not even close. How many no hitters did Nolan Ryan have? Seven. One nothing me. Which is why we named our church Seven originally. No, not just kidding. We didn't. But... Listen, Nolan Ryan played 27 years in the major leagues, and he was a consistent winner, competitor, gentleman, community-minded person, God-fearing man. He has a consistent life. And then I have Cal Ripken Jr. on my wall, the picture of him breaking the record for the most consecutive games played in the history of the major leagues. He played in 2,131 games to break the record that everyone said was unbreakable. Lou Gehrig's 2,130. Cal finished with 2,632 consecutive games played. That means Cal Ripken showed up consistently for work without missing a day for over 16 years. And then I have the incomparable Tony Gwynn, a man who could have left San Diego for free agency and much more money to go to another club, but he stayed in San Diego. He stayed and he was consistently the best player on the field for 20 years in a Padres uniform. And then I have John Wooden, the best basketball coach of all time, winner of seven consecutive national championships, never repeated, and 10 out of 12 national championships. And his pyramid of success, which deals with being consistent, is on my wall. And then finally, among other things, I have Notre Dame Irish football, consistently the best football program in the land, year in and year out, with eight national titles and counting. <laughs> I can go on and on, but you get the point consistency is what I love to see. It's a constant reminder to me. If you want to achieve anything worthwhile in life, you must be consistent. And one of the things that Paul loved about Timothy was that he was consistent. It's why he commended him so highly. He loved Timothy. What does that mean for us today in our section of Philippians? It's so important to remain consistent. God is looking for people who put character before conformity. If you want to be consistent in life, then you're going to have to put character before any kind of conformity to the outside world. People like this are not afraid to be different from the culture around them and to stand alone if they have to. People of high character are consistent people. Timothy was one of those guys. That's why he's accommodate, his commendation is in the Bible. Verse 22 it says this, Timothy has proved himself. He has served with me in the work of the gospel. Prove means tested character, integrity. Timothy's name actually means he honors God. He did not cave into pressure, whether it be peer pressure or any other kind of pressure. Now, it's been said that if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. As a matter of fact, there's a great old country music song, God's music, by the way, <laughs> that had a chorus in it that said, you've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. You've got to be your own man, not a puppet on a string. Anyone know who sang that? Aaron Tippin. Two nothing me. What year? Double or nothing. 1991. Two nothing me. No, three nothing me. What are you willing to stand for in life? Are you willing to stand for Jesus? If so, I want to encourage you to get baptized it's time to draw a line in the sand and say, I'm on Jesus' side. Baptism is proof of where our allegiance lies. We're going to be back together soon. And when we are, we're going to be baptizing a lot of people. And I hope, I hope that you would be one of those people if you haven't been baptized yet. Now, I'll close with this. Our culture needs more people of conviction who cannot be bought at any price. People that are committed to their values, consistent in their beliefs and convictions, 
there are lots of people who are half committed to everything. And that's no commitment at all. Being half committed makes you very inconsistent. Proverbs 10.9 says this, people with integrity walk safely, but those who follow crooked paths will be exposed. The bottom line for consistency is integrity. A nice personality will make a good first impression, but success over the long haul is built on character, not on image. The person of integrity will walk with consistency.